we're going to make typography variables for your design system. Let's jump in. In the file, you will find this table where I mapped out what I want to have in my typography system. Now, as I always say, feel free to change this to whatever matches your system and your needs, but this is what we're going to be making today. So in mine, I've split it up kind of like you do on web where I have six different H styles. So the heading styles and each one will come in a lighter weight and a bolder weight. And then I've got three different bodies. I've got a large, a regular and a small, and they will come in a few different weights as well. And then I also added a caption, which will be this kind of all caps, bigger kerning type, which I just love adding in my systems. Now, no matter if you're creating a really huge typography library or a small one, I would really recommend mapping it out first and then taking these screenshots and then you'll know what kind of variables you need to create. And then my font sizes, I'm going with a scale, which I would really recommend to use. It kind of has all the good basics in it. If you don't need these many styles, you feel free to drop some of them out. But I would say that a good rule of thumb is that your largest heading probably shouldn't be more than 64. Sometimes you would have a, something that's bigger than that. That's usually called a display, which you would use rarely in like a big banner or something like that. And only on your largest breakpoint. But again, that shouldn't really go over like a 72. Then underneath the 64, you probably want a 48, 40, 32, 24, and a 20, just to cover off all of your headings. Then for your bodies, if you are designing for a website, I would say that your basic font weight should be probably 16. Then you can play around with an 18 for a large body and a 14 for a smaller body or like a subtitle. But I would say that anything below 14 wouldn't really be considered body size. Then going below that, you can create a set of smaller font sizes for your kind of subtitles and stuff like that. I like creating one for 12, which is a subheader. And then I might also create one for 10 or 11, which is like a footer text, really, really tiny, tiny, small print. But I would never use that a lot. So now that we have all of these laid out, we can start creating our variables. We're going to create a primitive collection for typography and then we'll nest everything into styles. So I'll go into my design panel and click on variables. I already have some color primitive set up. So I'll create a new collection and I'll call it typography. First thing I want to create is the variables for the font families. So I'll create a string variable. So it has text in it and I'll call it font serif, which is the one I will use for my titles and the value you have to spell the name of the font correctly. If you don't spell it right, it won't find it. So this one is Hamlet like that. And then I need another one so I can use my shortcut to create the same type of variable shift and enter. And this one is a font sans serif. And in this case, it's fig tree. Just to quickly explain the difference between serif and sans serif, sans serif fonts are fonts that will have a mono line on their width, which means that throughout the whole line of the font, like on here, you can see that everything is the same weight. There's no kind of like bits that are going in or out. It's all exactly the same. A serif font is a font like Times New Roman, for example, that has that little slant to it. So the eyes will have a bit of a thing going in. All of the endings of the letters might have a bit of like a point to them. And the serif fonts are usually used for titles, whereas the sans serif ones are the more legible ones and easier to read. It's up to you, whichever you prefer in need in your project or your brand. So I'm going to put these into a group actually. So I'll select both of them, right click and new group with section. And I'll call this group font family. And then I want to create one more group. So I create a new string variable and I'll call it weight slash to create the group. And then we've got a few different kinds. Let's start with light. I'll name it like that. And then you can see weight. The variable name is light and the value is also light. I'll create another one. So shift and enter. I'll call this one regular and the value will be regular. Then one more semi bold and the value and notice this is why I said the screenshots really help because I can see that in both of these fonts, semi bold is actually spelled without a, a space in between. So I can just write semi bold one more, which is italic. I know italic isn't really a weight, but it comes under the same drop down. So we will use that there. So I'll call this one italic. And then the value is also italic. One thing to be aware of with using variables for weights in Figma, you can do it in two different ways. You can use text like I did here. So call it regular, semi-bold, bold, 
whatever you need. But we do know that a lot of font families will use different namings. So one will call it bold and one might call it heavy, right? Or some might have bold and heavy. So what you can also do is use numbers to denote the weight. So usually a regular weight is 400 and then the bolds will go up and the lights will go down. So 100 might be like ultra thin or something like that. Whatever works for the fonts that you choose, but just be aware that you've got those two options at hand. We've created our typography variables. Now we want to assign these to the texts on the canvas and then create styles from them. So we're nesting the variable inside of a style. So let me teach you a little trick to select all of them at once, because we don't want to be going one by one into here, right? What I'm going to do is select one of these that has that ha Hamlet already on that. And again, this is a great reason why you want to spread these out before you start creating your variables and styles. Then I'll command backslash or command K to get my kind of quick actions menu coming up. And I'll say select all with same font. So now it's going to select everything that has the same font. Now, obviously, because it's semi-bold, it's only going to select the semi-bold ones, but still already it's saved me a bunch of work. So in this drop down, instead of just selecting the text, I'm going to go into this button over here and apply the variable for the font serif. Then I'll do the same for these ones. So I'll command and backslash. And you see that because I've already used this, it's already there. So I've selected all with the same and let's select font serif. Amazing. Let me just do the same with this one. For these, I'm actually just gonna hold down command and drag to select all of them. And then I'll command and shift and just click on both of these to select them. And then I'll go to this drop down, click on the apply variable and apply the sans serif. So now I've done that, half of the battle is already won. Now I need to do the same for the weights. So I'll select one of the headers that is using semi bold, command and backslash. Select all the same font, that will select all the headers. Then I know I need to add these ones, so I'll just hold down Command and Shift and click on all the strong ones here because I know that they're semi-bold as well. And Caption is also using semi-bold. Now in this drop down over here, I can apply variable and then just apply semi-bold. And you can see on the canvas, I can just double check that nothing has changed. If something changed drastically after I apply this variable, I know that something is off, maybe the naming doesn't match. But for now, I think it looks pretty good. Let's do the same with the lights. Then for my slants, I will select all of them and then just apply in the same drop down, apply variable, italic. Now with italics, it's important to remember that they behave differently in different fonts. Some fonts don't have italics. Some fonts will assign the italics different weights as well. So you might have a semi-bold italic or a regular italic or a light italic. So if you need that, make sure to put that exact name into the variable so it's correct. Now at this point, if you want to add any other variables, you can do that before creating the styles. So I've seen design systems where you have the font sizes as well inside of your variables because you might want to protect those as well in the variable. So then you can change it there and everything changes at once. You can also add in the line heights or the kerning or anything like that into the variables as well. Because we're creating a basic design system series, I would say that the most important things to nest are the font weights, and the font families. So we're just gonna do that, but feel free to go ahead and add anything that you might need for your design system. Let's move on to create styles. Sadly, I was not able to find a plugin that actually converts your text on the page into styles and doesn't break the variables. There are loads of plugins out there that do this, but with most of them, what I found is that once it creates styles, when I look at the styles, it's detached the variables and that's not what we want. So we're gonna do this manually, but it's still gonna be fun and quick. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So to create the styles, I'll select one of my text boxes and then in typography, I'll click on these four squares and create a style. Now I want this one to be in a group called headings. So I'll write headings and then slash. And then I'll command A and command C to copy that because I'll be using it quite a lot. And this one will be called H1 because it's header one. Then if I click on the canvas, you can see that I've created my first textile and it's inside of a group called headings. Then for the bold one, all I need to do is exactly the same. Go into here, plus headings, H1, and then I'll call it H1 bold because I know that it's the bold version of the H1. Now I'll go ahead and continue doing that for all of my styles.
When I'm done with the headers, I'm moving on to my bodies. So the first variable that I'll do, I'll obviously start it with body and this one is large, so large slash. So I'm creating this new group. Now for caption, this is a font that I really like to incorporate in all of my design systems because it just adds a bit of something extra. I usually take a small font size like 12, I give it a bit more of kerning, so space between the characters, and then I also make it so it's always capitalized. The way to do that is in type settings, and then you just select the case is always uppercase, and then no matter what you type, it will always be uppercase. I like to use this one for like little headers or things like that. I wouldn't use it for anything super long, but it's it's good like as a little table header or, or something like that. You see that a lot in mobile actually. And I've finished putting in all of my text styles. Now you might ask yourself at this point, why did we even create variables for the type if we ended up putting them all into this design system? And if we ended up putting all of our typography into styles anyway. Now the reason is we can now control the most important elements, the weight and the font from the variables for all of the styles at once okay so if you're using this as like a template and now you're using this for a brand and the brand has a really specific font family that they want to use all you need to do instead of changing all of these styles is go into your variables and let's say my new title font so my font for the serifs is now love you too and then boom it all changed yeah or if for example now my sans serif font needs to be tahoma that's it it changed everything all at once you will see that when you do that, things like, for example, love you too, doesn't have any weights. Yeah. So now we've got all of our H's looking the same. So we may need to remove the bold ones or maybe choose a different treatment for bold versus regular. But again, it makes it super, super easy to do everything from one place and have a treacle down instead of having to go into every single style. And that's that. We've created all of our typography variables. There'll be more episodes coming along in this series. We'll create radius tokens and stroke tokens and then start creating components for this design system. I hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when new videos come live. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what other videos you want to see. See you at the next one.